Hello and welcome to Business Insider with Mario Taniguzzi. Joining me today is Dan Kelly, who is president of the Canadian Federation of Independent Business. Thanks for joining us today, Dan. Happy to be with you. So Dan, we're kind of uh, getting close to four months into this COVID uh, environment and crisis. Um, what's the field these days and the state of the business uh, for the small business community in the country right now? Well, look, it really does range uh, depending on the location in the country and the sector of the economy in which the business operates. Uh, for some, there, uh, there are certainly some signs that, that some businesses are, are moving back closer to normal. Uh, I, I suppose on the optimistic side, the, the best news is that more businesses are allowed to be reopened at this stage. But still, under 60% of small and medium-sized firms across Canada are fully open at this stage, four months in. Uh, that means 40% of businesses are still partially closed with a, with a few still completely closed uh, as a result of COVID-19. Certainly those in the arts and recreation sector, uh, many of them are, are mandated to remain closed at this stage. Uh, and for others, of course, it's just a practical limitation because they have no customers. Uh, the, you know, there are some signs that some businesses are getting their sales back, but still, again, at this stage, only a quarter of small businesses have sales that they report anywhere close to being normal. Uh, that means 75% of businesses are underwater, so their doors may be open, but they are a long way from earning any money. In fact, months and months away, the majority of businesses saying that they don't expect revenue, they don't expect to break even. For, for six months or longer. So you've got to be to have some pretty deep pockets to be able to, to hang on during that kind of period. So we're yeah. by no means, this is, this is just not over. We've got a long way to go. Uh, while of course, there are a few bright spots happening in, in certain sectors. What's your best guesstimate and in, uh, in terms of what you guys have looked at uh, in for how many of our percentage of small businesses just simply won't survive all this? Our, our, our estimate right now is that about 15% of businesses uh, uh, are saying that they are considering permanent closure, uh, either winding down their business or declaring bankruptcy. Uh, you know, when you think about that, there are over 1.1 million businesses with paid employees. That's not including the self-employed. Yeah. Uh, so just of those that employ other Canadians, that could be upwards of 100, 150,000 businesses across Canada closing, closing forever as a result of the damage that has happened during this uh, COVID-19 emergency. Mm -hmm. uh, you think about the families, the businesses that the, the support the families that, uh, that own the businesses. All of the families that are affected, of course, uh, uh, you know, for the employees that uh, that that are that yeah. are um, employed by small and medium-sized companies across the country, the community donations, the tax revenues that that they produce, uh, the impact of that is likely to be huge. And and look, I'm hoping that it won't be as high as 15 percent. But but if 15 percent are seriously considering it right now, even if that's half that, we're talking tens of thousands of businesses just not here. And I, I suspect that's that's at minimum what gonna be what we see. Yeah. So the government has done a lot of stuff out there to help uh, people uh, and businesses. Uh, what do you think is still needed from the government at this point? Look, the, at the federal level, there are three major government support programs. The wage subsidy, uh, the, the Canada Emergency Business Account, the SEBA accounts, and the rent subsidy, the, Q, uh, the secret program that was announced uh, a couple months ago. Uh, the first two are working reasonably well, the wage subsidy and the SEVA loan programs. These are good programs that have supported thousands of thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of small and medium-sized companies. Uh, and, and certainly were helpful both in, in the uh, kind of the shutdown phase and can be helpful during the recovery phase. The rent program though, unfortunately remains a bit of a mess. Uh, provinces, including Alberta's, have moved to, the, to try to stimulate the program by putting in place commercial eviction protection, but still there's only a fraction of businesses that qualify that are actually getting the rent support that they need uh, to, in order to keep their doors open. But you know, our, our major message for, for Ottawa, for provincial governments as well, is that a lot of the emergency support programs either need to be continued 
or retooled to help in the recovery phase. Um, you know, people were underwhelmed by the, the wage subsidy because it was so late. Uh, it wasn't delivering money for months and months after the emergency started, but it actually can be quite helpful now in the recovery phase. If your revenues remain low, you can qualify for the, the wage subsidy and that can, you know, wages are typically the largest expense for business. So if you, if your revenues are slow to return, but your wage bill is covered uh, by government, it will allow you to open your doors and perhaps stay alive until uh, you know, you're able to, to start to win back some of your customers and, and, and with the uh, end of social distancing. Yeah. But, but we're a ways away from that. It's good that the government has announced that these programs are extended, but still, as we speak to you right now, um, we still don't have details of what the program looks like for July. We're already in July, and we still don't have any, any details as to how this program is going to operate. And then government wonders why the take up is lower than expected. Yeah. All right, Dan. Thanks for joining us today, Dan. Anytime. That was Dan Kelly, president of the Canadian Federation of Independent Business. This has been Business Insider with Mario Tonaguzzi. Thanks for joining us today.